Hey Easy World, I am back with another video and yes, two videos in one day. So I decided to film this video because I thought it was interesting and let's just have a conversation about it. As you saw in the title, Farfetch got sold. Here, this is a timely conversation as we, for those of you who have been living in the YouTube luxury community or at least watching it as I have, it's kind of big news, right? So wanted to get this out, get the discussion going. Think about you as a consumer and me as a consumer and how do you take this kind of information? So let's just get right into it. So everything I say in this video is my opinion. There is no true facts other than what I see on the websites and have, you know, the articles have plastered all over the internet. Well, you know, Instagram also gets to me with the fashion news and whatnot. And I'll link all of the articles that I've read through down below in the description box if you want to check it out for yourself. So headline news this morning when I woke up, Farfetch was acquired by Copan, if I'm saying that cor correctly, a Korean based company headquarters in San Francisco in collaboration with Green Oaks, a private equity firm purchased Farfetch. Now, all of you have known Farfetch. They do a lot of sponsorship. I've never done a sponsorship with them. I'm nobody. So, <laughs> and mostly these are just observations, right? So they were sold to Copan. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Copan, I wasn't until this story came out. They're basically the Korean version of Amazon and they have been, you know, in the food industry or foods delivery service industry, online shopping, the different online e-commerce kind of space. So they basically pumped $500 million into Farfetch to keep it going. And just to give you a quick tidbit of history when it comes to Farfetch, they went public in 2018 and they're a UK based company. Their stock prices, and I'm in that world and I've seen a lot of acquisitions, I've seen a lot of, you know, um, IPOs. Not that I play in the private equity world or anything, but I get tidbits of it, right? Observation wise, curiosity, et cetera. They went public. I Googled the stock and it's FTCH if you're interested in looking at it on, for yourself. FTCH. They went public in September starting at $28. Their high was in 2021 at a $73. Their low was basically the past day or two tanked to 60 cents. That is their stock. And this is a public company. Something I've noticed also during the pandemic, everything spiked in the pandemic when it comes to e-commerce. Another one was Peloton, right? Peloton was I think when they IPO, I have to look this up, but I'll insert on screens for anything I missed. They IPO around that same price range. And at the peak during the pandemic, when everybody was confined at home, they went public and their stocks skyrocketed to like 80 something dollars. And then they plummeted. So observation wise, a lot of these companies that do IPO doesn't mean that they will make it and they are going to be successful in the future. Stocks can go up and down, which is not going to into finance, but I am a person that is highly supportive of you diversifying your investments should you have any. And no, bags are not true investments. They're investments in your wardrobe, they're investments in yourself, but they are not actual investments. So what does that mean to you and myself as a consumer, right? That is the question I want to ask of you to see what you're, you think about, about it, right? So Farfetch's business model is providing a platform where you can purchase um, certain goods and items and basically turn it into a one-stop shop and they have access to all of these boutiques around the world some of the times you'll get better pricing other times you have to pay a little bit more and you could probably find better pricing elsewhere for me i have actually never bought anything from farfetch before because i'm kind of a risk taker i would prefer to pay 20 30 10 percent less and purchase it directly from the boutique on my own just so i can save a little bit of money and not everybody's like me, right? I enjoy the thrill of it. I enjoy hunting for it and paying less for it. If I can get a bargain, I will, right? So 
a lot of people don't want to deal with that. And Farfetch is a great platform for you to do so where you see something that you want, you purchase it, they deliver it to you in a very short amount of time. If there's any issues, they take care of it completely. There is definitely value and something to be said for paying, let's just say 5, 10%, 20% more for that peace of mind and that ease of service. So I completely appreciate that particular business model. So that's something I would always go to, and that's probably why I haven't purchased from Farfetch, and maybe one day I will. But I will pose a question to you later on to see what you think. Again, I think it's a great business model, and I was, I'm sad to see that they're struggling a little bit after the pandemic, but that's just the way the markets work, right? The markets are in cycle, and fashion, luxury items are just as prone to the market cycles like any other industry. So... Obviously, I had to go down a rabbit hole and search other popular platforms that I've seen and used myself. So satire is another one. And I've talked about satire before, right? Is, a, is an Australian-based company that does not hold inventory very similar to what Farfetch does. Dean Mintz is the CEO and the founder of Satire. And they started the company back in 2017 and they IPO'd in December of 2020. But recently, again, I didn't know this, but once you start Googling, everything starts to pop up. He sold a ton of his own shares. So what does that tell you? Is he just like done? I'm done with this business. I started this company. It was successful. It IPO'd and I'm, I'm cashing out and I'm going to go live in the woods. <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, we don't know who Dean Mintz and what his thought process is. But there's also something to speculate when it comes to talking about maybe he sees what's happening out there, right? with Farfetch and he was just jumping ahead and see that the luxury industry has taken a toll compared to 2020 and 2021, right? The hype of luxury fashion is not around forever and it could be cyclical, right? There's a down period, there's an up period, there's, you know, a spike. Fashion will always be around, but there's highs and lows when it comes to fashion and luxury in particular. So another company is Matches Fashion. Again, very popular on the YouTube world and uh, you know social media in general. Now they're still a private company. They have been sold to a PE firm, Apex Partners in 2017. And there are rumors and talks that they're going to be purchased by another group called Fraser, Fraser Group, I believe. And to me, these three different platforms have very similar business models. They're not 100% the same, but they're very similar. And all of us as consumers are checking them out at least or using them to purchase, right? Again, at the end of the day, I am a consumer first as opposed to an influence or, or you know, a promoter or anything, right? So again, there's nothing wrong with any of these companies. I'm just asking these questions to think what your thoughts are on these companies. Have you used them before? Definitely comment down below and let me know experience. Maybe I'm missing out. Maybe I should be using Farfetch. I don't know. I will say I have used Satire and the experience itself wasn't bad. They just had mislabeled the item that I bought and they took my item back, no questions asked. So that was a good experience. Never bought from Satire ever again, but it wasn't as smooth as I wanted it to be. So the other question I want to pose to you is that Gucci has talked about how they are revamping their business and they are possibly, again, this is all alleged, I don't have any proof, but rumor has it that Gucci is pulling from all of their secondary or considered third party um, vendors, meaning a third, third party platform that they sell to wholesale wise. And I know Super Dacup has talked about this before, where they did mention that Gucci is revamping that and pulling all of that stock, right? Trying to make everything more exclusive. There was also another YouTuber, I'll make sure to link everybody I mentioned down below so that you can go check their videos out. But they also mentioned that YSL is pulling away from department stores, not their freestanding alone boutique, but their depart their products from like Nordstrom's or Neiman Neiman Marcus, where they don't have a inside boutique uh, of like the the department store. They're pulling all of their stock, which is why YSL has been going on sale at these department stores, so that they can clear out the stock and kind of quote unquote start fresh with their boutique. Basically, when I say these boutiques, they are 
just renting space within Nordstrom's or Neiman Marcus or whatever, but they're not employees or not part of the Neiman Marcus group or Nordstrom's or whatever it is. They're considered freestanding or standalone stores. Now, if Gucci has already made that claim that if they are pulling from third-party platforms like a far- Farfetch or Satire, and they're part of the caring group, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think companies like YSL would follow suit and no longer offer their uh, products to also gray gray markets, right? Like Joma Shop or um, Rulala or Guilt.com. How do you think this is going to affect Farfetch matches and companies like Satire? Satire, am I saying that right? Satire. How do you think this is going to affect these platforms where they typically source from boutiques and boutiques get them wholesale and basically it goes down the chain, right? So I don't know. How does this affect that? Maybe Gucci is trying to be more exclusive, maybe mo- like monopolize big luxury. Like I have mentioned this before on my channel, big luxury as in Louis Vuitton, YSL, Celine, you know, they're all part of like some sort of big group and they're making everything exclusive, right? Are they moving in that direction? Louis Vuitton already moved in that direction. Obviously, we know Hermes and then Chanel. None of these companies are on any of these websites, right? There's no way to get a brand new product from them unless you go to their website or their boutiques, um, brick and mortar boutiques. So I don't really have an answer for you, but I hope this video did spark some ideas and conversations. And of course, if you're continuing to purchase luxury, what are your thoughts and how do you approach this as a consumer? How do you want to spend your money and where you shop from? Again, this is also why I love indie brands. I've recited this and chant this over and over again, where I look at companies like Floron, Wandler, or you know, Tatomi or whatever, you know, these indie brands are private. They're still considered quote unquote against like the big luxury brands, the mom and pop shops. Do we continue to support the big luxury or are we going to support the indie brands? I'm obviously I'm going to buy from both, but let's pay attention to a lot of these indie brands, right? Like the Kuanas of the world, what they're doing. All I'm saying is that, you know, we watch the news happening. I pay more attention to it now, not just in my current career industry, but also in the luxury space, since that is considered my hobby. More cognizant of what's happening. You know, the big companies are gobbling up the small companies. The small companies are failing, so they need the help. So it's not a bad thing, right? It's just interesting to watch how the world revolves and how deals shake out. So I hope this was an interesting video, kind of just like, Think beyond the purchases that we're making and see what is happening in a dog eat dog world if you really think about it. Life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll see you all next time.